when Lane passed, pretty much we had thought, you know, that's 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 the end of it. This is never going to happen again, and and rightly so. The thought of continuing on without him wasn't really in anybody's mind. But you know, we'd created all this music together, and it really meant a lot to to us to do that, and and even more so that so many people cared about it. Alice in Chains were one of the biggest grunge hard rock bands of the 90s. Many people broke down the Seattle sound and the Seattle explosion to four big bands, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, and Alice in Chains. And believe me, Alice in Chains were right up at the top of that list. They had an awesome grunge hard rock sound with a metal edge to it and compiled a bunch of timeless and classic songs. So what happened to the band? While Alice played one of their last ever gigs in April of 1996, that was their unplugged set, totally awesome musical experience if you've never checked that one out. And a couple months after that took place, they played a couple of gigs with the band Kiss and that was it for the band, all wrapped up in 1996. They did go back into the studio a couple of years later in 1998 to record two songs, Get Born Again and Died. And then it was in April of 2002 when frontman Lane Staley tragically died, which all brought about a very sad end for the band Alice in Chains. Or so everybody thought. Yeah, the band had been done a few years before Staley's death, and they remained done for a few years after Staley's death as well, but they did get back together and they did reform. And this happened in February of 2005. Now, in those intervening years since Staley's death, the band members did remain active in the music scene. Following the release of Jerry Cantrell's two solo albums, Boggy Depot in 1998 and Degradation Trip in 2002, he collaborated with several artists such as Ozzy Osbourne and Damage Plan, and bassist Mike Inez joined the band Heart and toured and recorded with the band. Then, in October of 2004, just a few months before the band reunited, Sony terminated their contract with Alice in Chains 15 years after the band had signed with the label. That was in 1989. But it was that massive tsunami disaster in December of 2004 the one that struck South Asia that ultimately played a big hand of Alice in Chains getting back together. It was Sean Kinney, Chains drummer, who came up with the idea of doing a benefit concert for the victims of the tsunami disaster. Kinney made calls to his former bandmates as well as friends in the music community and was surprised by the enthusiastic response he got to his idea. On February 18, 2005, Jerry Cantrell, Mike Inez, and Sean Kinney reunited to perform for the first time in nine years at K-Rock Tsunami Continued Care Relief Concert in Seattle. Now, this particular show did not feature current Alice in Chains vocalist William Duvall, but instead you had several special guests appearing to sing with Alice in Chains. <laughs> So I don't know, like, you know, we, we had had some conversations about, you know, I mean, we're musicians, so what do you do now? You're in a really tough spot, so. And we had talked about, you know, maybe getting back together to it, at the very least to go out and play the music one more time and kind of celebrate it for ourselves and take it around the world for our fans, you know, the fans of the music and celebrate our time with, with, with our friend, Lane, you know? And so, but you know, we just had a few conversations about it, this and that, and then, and then that tsunami happened and that was just such a kind of world altering event. And everybody, you know, was really inspiring to see everybody around the globe, especially in the, 
artistic community rally and like start doing gigs and raising money and trying to help people out. And, uh, and we wanted to be a part of that. So we're like, this would be a perfect time to do that. So why don't we, why don't we, why don't we, why don't we get together and invite some friends and we'll play the songs and we'll do it at home. We'll do it in Seattle. Cantrell added that the Tsunami gig was the first time that they had played any of that stuff without Lane. It was really heavy, it was really hard, but I'm glad we did it. Obviously it was something that needed to happen, and it was also about us healing a bit, you know? So the band had not officially reformed at this point, but rather just reunited for this benefit gig. However, more gigs and tribute shows would follow, with various special guests taking on lead vocals for the band. And as Jerry Cantrell states here, there was even interest from former Stone Temple Pilots lead singer Scott Weiland in taking over the lead spot for the band. There were no other guys? Were there any other guys? Not really. No? No. There's not a moment you're on stage with Scott Weiland and you're going, wow, no. this? No. That was no. a quick no. I got a call. I got a call from Weiland. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for work. Well, I mean, you know. And there was a, there was a there was a discussion from from his end I think about it, but but the man who would take over lead vocals for the band was William Duvall, and he would play his first show with Alice in Chains in 2006. I had known William, and we had done some some time together, you know, on the on the Degradation Trip tour, and we fit really well together, and 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 kind of worked in a could worked in a similar way we did some alice material so we had some experience playing that stuff so when we started thinking about getting together to the jam you know he was a natural suggestion for me and i you know we suggested him to the guys and brought him down to rehearsal love hate love might have been the first song we did and he just killed it you know he did a great job and i remember mike and sean looking at me like all right it's pretty good you know and uh, we just kind of went from there. And then the attention was just, you know, just what I said, just take it around the, take it around the globe for a couple of years, play to all our fans, and then leave, leave the thing in a better place than it got left at, you know, at least on an up note. Drummer Sean Kinney said about the band's reunion, I never called Jerry. He never called me and said, hey, let's get the band back together, you know? We had been taking every step extremely cautious and slow and just doing whatever feels right. If it's genuine and we're doing it for genuine reasons and we're all okay with it, then we take a little step. So as long as it felt good and from the right place and it's about making music and carrying on. So the process had been slow and tentative and the band had really just been taking one thing at a time. Touring here and there and just getting used to the whole process again. And then after a period of time while we're touring, songs start getting written. And then, you, you know, thoughts start like, man, that's really good. And then, wow, there's another one that, wow, that's, that's happening. Like, okay, now we've got a record's worth of material. So you start thinking, wow, you know, could we, could we make that move? And that's a, that was a real hard decision to make, you know, um, for us, you know, because, you know, if, if, we're the type of guys, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna go all the way. And it had to feel right. If it didn't feel right to anybody, that wasn't gonna work. So, and it, it did. We just kept taking the next step that happened naturally. And uh, that turned into some really cool tours and the rebuilding of you know, our connection with our fans and, and the music. And, uh, and then we you know, came up with uh, Black Gives Way to Blue. And Black Gives Way to Blue, that first album that Alice in Chains did since the death of Lane Staley, their first album since 1995, their self-titled Tripod, the dog album. That's right, it was their first studio album since 1995. Black Gives Way to Blue was released 14 years later in 2009. And let me tell you right now, it did not disappoint hard and heavy fit perfectly with the times yet still maintain that hard edge and hard grind that Alice in Chains fans had grown to love. Amazing tracks on this album such as Check My Brain, Your Decision, A Looking In View, Lesson Learned, and that's just to name a few. And don't forget about the title track, Black Gives Way to Blue. That was the song that Jerry Cantrell 
wrote for his former bandmate and friend, Lane Staley, an amazing song. But it was far from just a one and done for the newly reformed Alice in Chains. They put out The Devil Put Dinosaurs Here in 2013, and followed that up with Rainier Fog in 2018. And in October of 2021, Jerry Cantrell released his third solo album, Brighton. So very awesome to see that the band did not just fall up. No, they came back, they reformed, and they have released some amazing material. Not something they rushed into, something they put a lot of time and thought into, and really made sure that they were doing what they were doing for the right reasons. And as fans of Alice in Chains, as we all are, damn, it is really great that they did that, right? Very cool that they came back and released more music. It, it's literally, it's literally that simple, man. We, 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 we operate the same way that we, we've always operated on, and, and like a kind of a fun attitude. It's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we make music that we like to make and, uh, we wanted to see if we could do that again, you know, uh, simply based on the fact of, of, we really felt shitty about what had happened to thousands of people you know that got killed in the in that tsunami and and as well as the outpouring of a lot of other people across the the, <clears throat> the world we put something together to raise some money that was it. it wasn't to reform the band so it was a good thing that we got together to do you know what i mean we we gave we were giving back just to make make some money in in the process of doing that we did something good for ourselves too because we got to stand in front of our, the people who dig us and um, we got to stand with each other and face up to our reality and move forward from there so that's what we did it's and amazing. we're still doing it 